You know, we've all noticed that after a major sporting event, within a day, within hours, there are thousands of t-shirts out there just like this commemorating the event. They're in stores, they're in kiosks, they're everywhere. Well, one of the reasons they get there so quickly is inside this building. M&R Printing Equipment here in Glen Ellen, Illinois, makes a series of high-speed stenciling equipment for t-shirts. We're going to talk to their controls engineer about the uh, automation and the electronics they embed on these machines that help them uh, get the productivity that they need to crank these machines up. So we'll be right back. All right, we're here with Bo Beal. He's responsible for the electronics and controls on these stencil printing machines. Bo, thanks very much for, for giving us some Good time to today. Now, this is a multicolor stencil printing machine. Tell us a little bit about uh, the mechanics of this. I know you've been making these machines for almost 20 years now. I think we'll be able to talk a little bit about how they've evolved, but tell me a little bit about the, the mechanics, multiple stations, um, how, does it, how does it operate? So this machine is a, a textile press. It's used for printing uh, on T-shirts. It's called Challenger. Uh, actually, this particular one is a Z-series, 16 colors. But means that you can print up to 60 col 16 colors at the same time on the press. What it does, uh, basically, uh, as you see, we can load the T-shirt on the pallet. Once the T-shirt is loaded, we can index the pallet from station to station. And on every station, you can put the screen with different color. And uh, once the table indexes from station to station, different colors are being placed on the T-shirt. And uh, once the machine makes like a full revolution, uh, printed T-shirt comes to the unload station. And uh, this is where you unload the T-shirt and place it on a dryer just to uh, uh, provide the final curing. OK. The, the means by which we're moving um, the, uh, the stenciling system in this particular module, you were telling me that that's evolved quite a bit over the years. You've got, um, well, tell, tell us a little bit about how the motion here is, is conducted. So the printing station basically uh, as a uh, design, as a drive system for the printing head was uh, first designed with a pneumatic cylinder. And uh, as the pricing to do for the, the, the linear, to motion, do linear motion, motion for uh, flat and for print. Uh, over the time, once the prices for electronic components uh, dropped down, sure. uh, we started to implement the electromechanical drive systems. And uh, the next generation printing head uh, was using the AC drive uh, with AC induction motor. And uh, what we see today on this particular machine is uh, generation three, uh, where uh, basically AC drive uh, provides the position close of control for AC induction motor. We are working right now uh, in our R&D department on the next generation, which will be probably the fourth one. Uh, basically, we plan to put the integrated uh, servo drive, uh, servo drive motor, to uh, move the printing head. Now, a little bit about the because this is a closed loop system. The, there's an encoder built into the bearing. Did I understand that right? This is special. Yes, this is a special design. Uh, uh, which was uh, developed uh, in cooperation between our company and uh, motor manufacturers. Uh, what we did here, basically, uh, we decided to implement the SKF sensor bearing uh, inside the motor. The nice solution of this design is such that uh, SKF sensor bearing is a very robust product because uh, First, it was the, actually it was developed and used in automation in car in car industry for ABS systems in the cars, and uh, it's a very simple four wire feedback with a low resolution but enough uh, high to provide the required accuracy by the uh, printing head. So, uh, induction motor in the back instead of uh, rear bearing uh, has uh, SKF sensor bearing. Okay. It's like a bearing with a magnetic ring, which provides uh, 32 pulses per revolution. And this is used as a feedback to control the position on the printing pad. 
Okay, now to get the position information there, let's talk a little bit about your HMI. Um, what are we using here to get your, your information? Uh, well, is this a recipe system? Yes, it is. When you look at our HMI, basically uh, for every printing station we can store four parameters. It's a position, uh, front position, rear position, flat speed, and print, print speed. And uh, the recipe allows us to store the stall all four parameters for every station uh, on a one screen, in a one file. So when we want to change something, any kind of uh, speed or position on any printing station, basically you can do it from the master HMI uh, by changing the data and sending it to the station. Or you can do it also on the, uh, from the local HMI where basically uh, you can do it as well by uh, changing the value of the register and transferring it to the motion controller. So we can get a picture of this later perhaps, but this, this could also be used, for example, for fine-tuning after you've downloaded the recipe in case there's variations that weren't anticipated? The local HMI can uh, provide almost the same functionality like master HMI. Okay. It can provide the alarming, it can send the parameters file, it can send the job recipe for the printing station. So uh, we are trying. What we are trying to do is to bring uh, more intelligence, which so far was uh, uh, basically restricted only to the master node. We we try to basically bring that intelligence to the local node as well. Okay. Now this is all tied together. We got a, we got networking here. Tell me a little bit about the the network choices you've made. Uh, when we are looking for the network on this machine, uh, the first uh, goal was to be able to exchange the data between the devices on the machine. And to be able to do it, uh, at the beginning we requested and basically we required uh, two things which, could, which should happen before we start to implement the networking on the machine. One of them was the English, and the second was we call click. English, basically, I am trying to refer to commodity protocol, mm -hmm. which, would, which would allow all devices coming from different automation vendors uh, uh, to communicate together. And uh, at the beginning, uh, when we are looking at networks like Profibus, CC-Link, DeviceNet, we couldn't uh, get the variety of the devices uh, supporting such protocols, not to mention the cost of the uh, uh, communication using those networks. So when we are looking for the networking for this machine, it should be, we are looking for something what would be cost effective, what would be simple to wire and uh, simple to, uh, to program as well. That's why on this particular machine we decided to use Madbus. Uh, the reason is such that there is no uh, royalty uh, pay Price is right. for, for the networking. We also were looking for the simplicity of the wiring and uh, what we did on this particular machine we implemented the RS485 using the RJ45 hardware and uh, basically this allowed us to uh, achieve two major goals which was the English in this particular case is Modbus and also Click, which was basically the wiring of the RS485 network using the uh, RJ45 cables. Okay. Okay. And, and you talked about networking being, being a critical important. Is that the, the next, the next five-year horizon for the company? Is that's, that's the performance features that are more likely to be in the next generation machine? Yes, it is because uh, we are talking not only about the networking on the machine itself, where basically we exchange the data between the master station and local stations for the job recipe, but we are also uh, trying to develop the networking system where basically machine can talk to the company network, where the job recipe from the machine, which is basically the valuable information, can be stored uh, on company server and uh, basically used as a valuable information which allow them, which will allow them to uh, speed up the production process when the same job is printed again. Now speaking of speed, what is a typical throughput for a machine of this size when it's got 
you know, eight, 10, 12 colors. This particular machine can run at uh, 100 dozen per hour. That means that you can print like 1,200 T-sheets per hour. But uh, once on the printing show, we tried to take a challenge and try to beat the world record. And the press uh, we were running printed like 1,802 T-shirts. That's a lot of T-shirts. Hour. Yes. A lot of T-shirts. Bo, thanks very much for your time. Thank you very I appreciate much. the explanation of a, a very interesting little machine. I'm Joe Feely for ControlDesign.com. If you're a machine builder or a system integrator who'd like to be the focus of one of these spotlights, give us a call, send me an email, get in touch with us. We'll see what we can do. Thanks for watching.